Uh, hello again from the car. Uh, this is episode 38 of the Hoopercast. <laughs> 37 and a half, whatever. Yeah, it's going to be 38. This Sorry, is... we put in a lot of work on that last one. Oh, it's this weird. van's coming for you. It's you... weird because, you know what, like, whenever I drive past people, I'm always, like, I'm always the one who's grimacing, going, like, why are you going so slow? And now I guess I understand, like, <laughs> these people, but it's, I, now I understand how really stupid it is for people to get so angry about being behind a slower vehicle, like, oh, God, I can't believe I had to pass you. And it's like, but you passed me. You're not, oh, we're not going this way. Uh, <laughs> but you passed me. Like, Bump that, 450? Yeah. You can suck it, 450. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Not into that. <laughs> Ten bucks to go to the beach and back. We didn't even get in the water. Yeah, we didn't. <laughs> People, it's literally been uh, 30 minutes since we recorded 37. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's fun that we're road tripping. How but often do you road it's trip? It's been a week <laughs> or two days. Oh, that's not bad. You could keep it and then people, with it. it's like Lord of the Rings. you got to wait a year for the next one to come out. Well... We've been cranking them out. Dustin and I recorded... Which is good. That's how it should be. Well... I mean, that's only because we had a lot to talk about and I had time to do it. Yeah. Like, that's really just... I mean, maybe not every day. Every day is probably not really, good. Well, but. one of them we recorded on New Year's Day, so I didn't have, like... I didn't have to... I wasn't at work, so, like, it... You know, there was time. Right. Um, and I had time to edit it. But, um... It's tough, so it's... it's. Do you have a favorite it, podcast that you listen to? That's not yours, obviously, but... Like, do you have a favorite one? I have one, and it's the only one I listen to. What is it? Comic Book Man. I've heard of them. And it's good because it, it's Kevin Smith... Who's not funny? He's not funny, but you know he's talented, and I can give him that. But the reason I watch or listen to it now is because I watched the show Comic Book Men, and I'm not even into comic books, but it's cool to see how much value you can put on a piece of paper that has some ink on it. You know what I mean? And it's cool the way they sit around. They're all like high tech. They have like a soundboard, and the Asian guy runs the soundboard, and like Kevin Smith's like, "Oh, I'm Kevin Smith." That was you know awful, but. That's his thing, and he has like four other guys, and they talk, and it's neat. But it's like I get sick of seeing him in a soccer, uh, soccer hockey jersey. I don't like Kevin Smith. Um, so if you do like him, then you are free to disagree with me. Uh, you didn't need me to tell you that to know that you were free to disagree with me. But um, I think Kevin Smith is as a child. Yeah, he's an old child, um, big old kid. We can skip Kevin Smith and just no, know no, that... No, 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 that's fine. No, 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 this is fine, because this is something I don't know if I've talked about at really at length, but Kevin Smith, long story short, there was a big thing where him and Adam Carolla were going to do a show together, and then, like, I, I can't remember all the details. You can YouTube this argument, um, you know, between him, because Kevin Smith came on, the sh- came on Adam's show to just discuss it with him, but he just, he came on and... Um, was pretty much like, um, why don't you just call me, dude? Like, and he was like, because the because if you follow like the etiquette of how things happened, then Kevin should have called Adam. Adam was the one who provided his phone number to Kevin. Oh, really? But Kevin felt disrespected that Adam wasn't contacting him. But to be so petty about this, like, do you want to work? And then all of a sudden, it's like Adam Adam Crowley hears from telepictures, like, uh, we're dropping a deal. Kevin Smith, I want to work with you. He says you're an asshole. And he's like. Oh, I remember that. And he said, the last time I spoke to Kevin was, I'm excited, here's my number. And Kevin's like, why don't you just call me, dude? And it's like, because you didn't give me your number. I had no way of contacting you besides email. I said, here's my number. Let's talk about it. Does he it. think he's that big of a star? He does. Like, he made a couple movies about pot and, like, cussing. and like that. That's give, Clerks in a nutshell. I will Kevin Smith this. He has, I, 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 will, I will forever credit him for having comic book knowledge and having geeky... The truth, the reality is, we need people like Kevin Smith in the world creatively involved in movies. It, it, that's a fact, and I will never dispute that part of his artistic merit because he does have that. right. Which I said he's talented. So he's, he a can't. Comp, he's a competent filmmaker. Hell, dude, Red State was amazing. I did like Red State. I did Red like Red State. Red State was great, and because of that, it was filled with none of his Clerks bullshit. Clerks did a lot for movies. Clerk, when I don't like the movie Clerks, but I will forever credit him for that movie because him and Robert Rodriguez and other people. We're making, or, you know, we're out there making movies for cheap in the, you know, in the early '90s, right. and really showing you what you can do with almost no money. And because of his talent for dialogue and char- and relatable characters, you know, that's why that probably like comes from his comic book background. I just don't, I just don't like that because, well, it comes from him being an everyman. Well, yeah, really. him and Quentin Tarantino, Ron Rodriguez deserve infinite, you know, um, respect for what they did as filmmakers. That being said, I don't like his his humor. I think he's too vulgar. I think he falls back on you know penis jokes too much yeah. and like boobs or pot or like. That's or, why I didn't like Clerks. I just didn't. I didn't understand I it. Didn't, like I, I got it. Like yeah, they work in a restaurant. Right. But 
at least I don't, know, I don't I, I, that's the thing so I don't and so and, and everything with him he, he got mad at people I don't really I don't I give him infinite respect as, an, as you know, as an artist, except really on the humor side. But that's subjective. That's just not my thing. It's not saying it's not for others. He's successful, and he. Oh, this is it. Where are we? We're we're about to. This is fifty nine. This is where we want to go, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, like I have no fucking clue where we are. <laughs> no, I, I think I do. <laughs> this is now we're heading north. Of oh, I know where we are now. Yeah. Never mind. I just thought we were on Beach Boulevard still. We I were... relate everything to food. So, and there's the Happy Shack and the Art. I think it's called Happy Shack. Yeah. More like the Hippie Shack. Wow. You're right. God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, we lost our lease relocation sale. What do you mean you lost? You got stoned and like, what is we can't, that? We can't find it, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, we had like that, that thing. That it's like the eighth tattoo contract. shop in this one block. Dude, there's one by my house now. Tattoos. All right, hold on. Let's stay on task. Let's go um, get tattoos. So, so, I don't want one. But Kevin Smith, like, just as how he, how he deals with, like, criticism, he can't take criticism. Like, when everyone said, dude, cop out, when critics hated cop out, he just came out and was just like, man, fuck you guys. Like, you don't understand. Like, or, like, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. Like, and it's just like, I understand the attachment to your felt. Like, and I credit him for what... Him being outraged by critics is better than Steven Spielberg saying, um, yeah, Indie 4 was bad. Don't do that. Support your work. Don't just say that because everyone else hates your movie. Don't say that just so everyone will stop taking, talking, talking about, it, about yeah. it. Defend it. Shia LaBeouf saying, yeah, we sort of dropped the ball at Transformers 2. You know, you know, Mike, Michael, Michael and Steven kind of dropped the ball. First of all, you can just say, I didn't feel like I did a good job in it. That's all you can say. But to, to really say... Yeah, I guess you can't say really... the director who helmed this movie, because Michael Bay came out and said, uh, he shouldn't be talking like that. Michael Bay, you can say whatever you want about him, but he, I respect any artist who stands behind their work. John Favreau stands firm behind Cowboys and Aliens, which nobody liked, he says, but I felt like that was my most evolved work. Huh. And, you know, and that was in, it was a good experience, and I just felt like creatively it was my most evolved work. You can say whatever you want about the finished product. You know, that's your opinion as a consumer. But at least you didn't say, yeah, you're right, it sucked. You know? It's, 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 it's unprofessional. So I'm glad Kevin Smith believes in Cop Out and defends it, because he should do that. It's just the way he, he sort of did it in an immature way. He could have just said, well, that's their opinion, but I'm, I'm, I stand behind my work. That would have been the thing to say. But he, did, he just reacted like a child. And just and uh, he came out on Twitter, and it was just... So, you know, and people on Twitter were telling him, like, you know, stop being a baby. And he just kept being a baby about it. So I think he's kind of a big baby. Now, really, now that I think about it, the more I talk about this, the more I really feel like I'm on his side. <laughs> so it's really not an even a founded argument anymore. So if anyone's listening, or, God, if he's listening, first of all, thank you for listening. And I hope you keep listening. Um, I really just think only a couple things he's done are unprofessional. But I really defend his right to to defend his work, you know, because at the end of the day, he's the artist and he chooses what to do. And I support that. And I support what he's done as a filmmaker. I support his business model with Red State. He didn't, he didn't market it. He, he, he distributed it himself because no one, people are like, I'm not going to distribute this. And he was like, fine, I'll do it myself. And he did it himself and it got out and people loved it. That's, that is his most evolved work because it is so unlike his other films. That was kind of a flip flop. Kevin Smith sucks. I think Kevin Smith does. <laughs> no, yeah, have you yeah, seen? No, that's true. You're uh, right. Talking about how he's like defending his work, and everybody. I mean, if you're an artist, any kind of artist, you should always defend what you do, and you know, yeah. you should always believe in yourself or whatever. And that's really like you but, know, but, after school but, special. But believe but. in your product. Believe in your art. That's why you should do it in the first place. So, have know. you watched the Jaws documentaries where they're like, there's a clip of Richard Dreyfuss, and he's like, yeah. This flake's gonna suck. <laughs> like, they straight up is just like, I don't know. He's like, I'm not telling you to not go see it. I'm just telling you, don't expect greatness. And even Steven Spielberg was kind of sick, like, when he first screened it, you know? And, and, well, <laughs> they were all that worried. It's interesting because with Jaws, like, uh, Rick Dreyfus and Robert Shaw, you know, Quint and Hooper, yeah. um, hated each other. They could not stand each other. And that's okay because that's pretty much their dynamic in the film. Like right. They're supposed to like each other. There's one. There's really one scene where they where they get along, um, but they hate each other. Um, the shark would not work. Ever. It kept, it kept breaking, and so that's part of the reason you don't see the shark for a lot. And that's why the movie's so good is because they don't they don't show you too much of the shark too early in the film. So that when you do see it eating a guy, it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But if you go back that and watch it not, now, that it's that not, not that the scary. the original plan. The original plan was for you to see much more of the shark. And the reason it's not that, that's, that's, those are, 
stories like that make movies like that better. Like we 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 limited your your exposure to the shark because we had to on accident. Like we're yeah. glad we're glad it worked out the way it did, but that's not it would have been it would not have been as good of a movie if the shark had worked. You know, like there, it like, was like, really when interesting. When the boat to watch. sank and like some of the sound, like you know, um, the film was gonna get wet, and so like you know. They, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, they they held the guy was standing on the sinking boat, holding up all the film canisters so the rescue boat could get there and get it. You know, like there's a lot of stories behind. It took forever to make movies like, like that. a year or some some long time for a movie back then. And that's why, and that's I guess back to Kevin Smith. But same with like George Lucas and everybody. Like the reason Star Wars movies like that are so good is because of their limited budget in a way. Right. They're forced to pull back and they're forced to make. You know, what's gonna make this movie good? Well, we can't fall back on visuals. So we have to fall back on good writing and good acting and good camera work. You know, good camera work doesn't cost money. It just costs a, a talented, yeah. you know, cameraman. That's where movies need to keep going. That's why I love movies. You know, there's big budget movies like The Hobbit and everything, but but the, but people who started from nothing, like Peter Jackson, they know how to do a lot with a little. You know, even Robert Rodriguez, having a big budget, knows how to save money. You know, how to come in on time and under budget. You know, which is how you make money, right? Tarantino doesn't need a lot of money for like CG. He just he just he knows that his story is strong. He knows that his his script is strong enough, and he casts the right people. Right. And that's all you need. What's your favorite Tarantino flick? Uh, he has a lot of good ones. It's either Pulp Fiction or Jackie Brown. I really like. Oh, I mean, Pulp Fiction is obviously a classic, but I really like Reservoir Dogs. And there, <laughs> there are people. I think John's favorite is Reservoir Dogs. It's just I, funny. It's short. It's not that long. I, I, I like it's it. It's good. I like it, but I like. Um, I think Jackie Chocolate. Brown's pretty good though. Jackie That's Brown a good one. Is very good. And I haven't seen the new one, Django Unchained. Django, so I Django's see good. That. That's not the best, but it, it's one of his better ones. I don't like half his, his movies. I don't like. The Kill Bills. I don't like. Right, I'm not a, fa- a Kill Bill fan. You know, I, I would. I just. I really want to see uh, DiCaprio because I really. I've always liked DiCaprio. Is, the thing is, actually, of all the ter- the movies I've seen of his that he directed, you know, um, I've seen Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Kill Bill One and Two, Death Proof, uh, Bastards, and Django and Chains. So that's eight movies. Of those, oh, eight, that's right. He did do that. I Bastards. like Django, Bastards, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, and Jackie Brown. So I like five of the eight of his that he's directed. If I'm forgetting one, then I probably don't like that one either. But um, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. If you're forgetting, so, huh? so now that now that there's been Django, I mean, I still liked four out of the, the seven he did. So it's I still like more than half. I think that's positive. So yeah. he's got an overall like you know positive kill spread <laughs> for me. Um, so um, that's good. I had not seen True Lies. He did not direct it, but he uh, Ridley Scott directed that. I think. But um, Quentin Tarantino wrote it, and that's considered a great movie too. I've not seen that, so I wouldn't count that towards his directing efforts. But um, I've never had a problem with his directing. I've had a problem with uh, his scripts. Well, with the ones I don't like. Right. Kill Bill and, and Death Proof seemed. Death Proof had its merits, but ultimately I was just like, I don't care about these people. Right. You know, um, Kill Bill seemed just like a bag of references. I never really liked Kill Bill. I just I wasn't a fan. I mean, I, I, can, I can watch it. Cool here, I can watch it all the way through and be entertained. But I don't really think it's a great film. Yeah. Because it's more just about him going like, look at how much I know about film history. Which there's a little bit of that in Bastards. They'll talk about films. They talk about old movies and all right. that stuff. But they don't lose focus of the story. So, um, anyway. Well, yeah. what do you think? Uh, Sam Sam tweeted earlier about uh, most anticipated film of 2013. And I'll be honest, I don't keep up with like what's coming out. I know a little bit. You know, like that's, I, that's probably will be our next podcast. We did that at the beginning. We did that last January, where we yeah, we, I we, thought, we, yeah, we I remember the, that one. The, the whole thing and said, Here's but is there anything huge about. coming out like Iron Man three? Okay, I'm excited for that. Iron Man three is coming out. Um, oh God, I forgot a bunch of other stuff. That's what I'm saying. I don't keep up with it to really know. I you just, know, I, I, I flat out forgot most of. Them. I uh, and I, I you podcast about the Avengers. And uh, you you enjoyed that film, and I, I liked it too. And I like all those films. I just felt like it was more like a it felt like an Iron Man show. Not that it should have been called feel, Iron Man Three. I didn't feel like that actually. But Robert Downey Jr. had a big role in that movie, which I mean, well, they all, I great. Feel, I mean, he's I feel, awesome. I felt like they had equal time in that movie, and that was a big that was a concern of his and Joss Whedon's when they were right when they were creatively doing it because he said they said we didn't want it to be the Tony Stark show, right? Um, and I think everyone Iron Man has a big important thing he does, but really everybody. Does, I mean, if anyone got shafted in the Avengers, it's probably Thor. Yeah. 
Which, you know, you know to be honest, that's my least favorite Avenger flick. The, like, you know how they did the single ones yeah, yeah, before? Yeah. I didn't like the, Aven- uh, uh, the Avengers. Yeah. I didn't like Thor. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I think it's because I really have never seen it all the way through. I didn't get to see it in theaters, so I didn't get to experience it. I think Thor is it. good, and I think on a theme, and sto- like, it, it, Thor's story is very Shakespearean. Right. You know, and appropriately, it's directed by Kenneth Branagh. Um, you know who he is, right? No. Okay, well, he, he Kenneth Branagh is with this work a lot of Shakespeare stuff played like Hamlet played like Mac- oh, you know, oh, oh, in, in okay. film and stuff right. you probably, and you know him as Gilderoy Lockhart in the Harry Potter movies oh really that's him and he's also Arliss Loveless in Wild Wild West okay <laughs> Mr. West <laughs> that's him <laughs> do you like those uh, he's uh you're talking about Shakespeare have you seen those like new uh, what do you want to call them I think it's called like Contagion or con- something something it's an old Shakespeare play that they did, and it's got uh, the guy from 300, uh, Gerard Arthur, Butler, and it, Cor- as like the main character. Coriolanus? Yeah, that's it. Contagion. And it's, it's, <laughs> I couldn't remember what it was called. Coriolanus. No, no, okay. Coriolanus. Um, is it's one, a is strange a film, man. Well, I wa- it's very good, though. But here's, here's the... If I, I understood watched, what was going on. I watched, it rec- I watched it recently, and that's one of the ones I'm talking about, where I had to go on Wikipedia and understand what's going on. Because Coriolanus was directed by Ray Fiennes. Um, I've heard of him. Vol- I don't remember what he he's did. Voldemort. But... Oh, okay. But Ray Fiennes is, is a great actor. And so he directed it, and he stars as as uh, Caius Martius, the mm-hmm. main character. And then Gerard Butler is, um, I forgot, he's, the, he's his enemy um, for a lot of the movie. And so Ray Fiennes is, and that's, and that's, it's good when they can show you in films that Shakespeare stories can be applied to any time period, because what matters is the dynamic. Which is exactly what they were going for, yeah. Right, and so that's what's good about updating, a lot of movies, people don't realize they're based on Shakespeare. I mean, The Lion King is Hamlet. Right. People, I mean. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The first time I found that out, it blew my mind. I was like, whoa. Well, yeah. Um, so and a lot of films, it's not just Lion King. I mean, there's tons of stuff out there. Right, so, but that's just one example of like. When you think about, but what do you think movies? about the dialect? Like, well, and is that's that's the choice he made was I'm going to keep the dialect the same, which is cool. So, but you can't understand it. It's, it. It makes it less accessible. But people like Ray Fiennes don't make movies to be like completely mainstream or, right. or appeal to audiences. He's like, this is going to be. I'm going to show this. I, my whole thing is going to be. I'm going to show the strength of this this dialogue and this story being applied to real life. And I, you can argue whether it's a bad choice or not to not to update the dialogue. But I will say at least it's more impressive for all the performers to be... I, I did get taken out of it a little bit, like Jessica Chastain. People having arguments in Shakespearean language while they're pulling up in like a limousine, you know, is sort of strange to me. But every moment Ray Fiennes was on screen, just as this pissed off general who his very first lines where he's admitting he hates all the people. He hates everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has complete disdain for them. They end up casting him out and he's just pissed off at everybody. And... Um, it's a great movie and his performance is great, but it's very tough to follow because in Shakes, even, even understanding big words and old words, if, unless you understand Shakespeare dialogue through and through, you really not know what's going on. Yeah, I really thought that that movie was just too smart for me, if that's the right way to... Right. I did not understand a fucking word they were saying. <laughs> and I was just like, what? And, and I watched it. I knew it was a Shakespeare film, and I was like, I love Shakespeare, like, when yeah. I understand it. And we put it in there, and I watched it with Irish John, and he's like, what? Are, are, are they speaking English? And I was like, yeah, I think so. I think that's yeah. Middle English. I can't even tell what they're yeah, speaking. And, and then when you realize that they're speaking Shakespearean, I'm like, oh, shit, I have no idea what they're saying. Yeah. And I knew the whole story. I looked it up on Wiki and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, But it's one of those really... I don't know. It was kind of cool, and and that's what you were talking about. Uh, Gilroy Lockhart being a shake. Uh, what do you want to call can, it? Can, Shakespearean thespian, I guess is the right yeah, way. Yeah. That I mean, that'll teach you how to act. That'll teach you how to well, speak. Well, it also teaches you just like I mean, especially with a story like Thor, because everyone was like, "Why is Kenneth Branagh doing like a comic book movie?" Mm-hmm. But when you think about the dynamic of you know Thor and Loki and their relationship with their father and their kingdom, and just Asgard itself is not. You don't go, hey, what's up, dude? In Asgard, you, right? The way they speak in the comic. That's why everyone thought Thor couldn't be brought to the screen because. How, why is thou, right? <clears throat> how dare thou do the, you know? It worked enough. Like, I, I enjoyed the movie. I've never, like I said, I always turn it on at night. I'm like, I'm going to watch Thor tonight because I have a lot of friends that really like it. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to watch it. And I get to like the very end and I fall asleep. So it's like, you know, and it's just one of those things that just, and it's not the movie. It, that's no fault of the movie that I'm falling asleep during it. There's, I don't think there's ever been a movie that I've fallen asleep in I mean, you're because just, they've I been mean, so boring. Some people you know? just aren't, Thor is probably the least accessible or like, I mean, Tony Stark is, yeah, a very modern character, um, easier to bring to the screen, or easier to make accessible. Um, 
<clears throat> the Hulk's pretty, you know, pretty simple, lives in the modern world. Captain America, a little bit of a risk, but I'm glad that they, they did it the way they did it. I liked That's him. Good. I liked him. Thor is tough because he does live in a different world, but there's more to play with. It, it's just, it, so it's weird to integrate him into modern mm -hmm. life. I dug Hawkeye. I wish he would have had his own. I don't know how much you could have given him as his own film, but he probably got shafted a little bit too. I think it would have been a cool I, movie I think, to see. I think Jeremy Renner actually stated that he felt like he felt like he was supposed to have a bigger part. In that oh, movie. really? Well, or, or in the original script, he had a bigger part or something. But I mean, if you think about it, for most of the movie, he's not even himself. Oh, that's true. You're right. Because like, the very beginning of the movie, he gets like it's been so he, long. He, he gets like zombified it. and turned into a bad guy for most of it. Mm -hmm. Hawkeye's pretty much a plot device for most of the movie, and then he did, he gets. Dustin has a problem with this, and frankly, so do I. Like, um, Hawkeye gets like bonked on the head, and oh, now I'm a good guy again. How how many times have you seen the Avengers? Like, sat down and watched. It? I mean, obviously, besides the theaters, but uh, two or three. Maybe. Yeah, see, I've only seen it once. I feel like it's one of those movies that if I saw it twice, I'd be like, you know what? I enjoyed this a lot more than I think I enjoyed it the first time. Dustin, and I think I, I don't know. Dustin, we don't like it less, but we you when you watch that movie like it's that long and it's enough you yeah. realize that like it's a good movie but like um, and, and the character dynamics are good but just a couple of the plot elements are like don't really make sense and the movie doesn't really doesn't really doesn't really claim to have like an ironclad story um, so you know the next one needs to have a better story because now that they're all together you don't have to you don't have right. to explain them coming together as much you know, and have them all united against pretty much a faceless villain, you know, fighting a bunch of aliens that you don't meet until the final act, you know. But I just think the action in the Avengers is amazing. Mm -hmm. You just got an Xbox 360, that's something you've been looking forward to for a while for both its DVDs and its video games and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> what are you playing on it right now? Well, I never got it for, like, DVD playing capability. I was much more interested in being able to stream Netflix on my, to my TV. To which, Tara... Uh, okay, well, I'm saying this because it's true. I mean... T Tara was wary about me getting one because, right. because, frankly, she sees a lot of. There are a lot of. Um, she knows a lot of people who, with husbands who all they do is sit around and play Xbox instead of paying attention to their wives, and she's afraid. Because she was afraid that I would do that. So really, for me, that sort of motivated me to get my to to really just have my shit together. Um, so, because you know I don't want I didn't want anything I didn't do to be blamed on the Xbox or the video games. And so I really. I really do it when I don't have anything else to do or I'm waiting for laundry to dry. Right. So I try to keep it in perspective. Um, and she, and another reason she was opposed, or she saw I didn't see a benefit in it because she's like, we can already watch Netflix on the, you know, through the Blu-ray player. So I, you know, I think it streams better on Xbox right. at least. Anyway, but yeah, I just thought, I don't want to come home. I'm, I'm kind of sick of coming home and watching stuff. I can, sometimes I just want to come home and, and do, do, something. Some, do something interactive. Yeah. Um, where that I can control. Like, sometimes I don't want to watch action heroes just run around and shoot things. I want to run around and shoot things. Right. Um, so, I got this bundle that had the Halo Combat Evolved yeah. 10th anniversary, so I have that. Um, oh, with the updated graphics and yeah, stuff? So That's good. So, I've started the original campaign, but it's just weird because I... It's like, so they're explaining what a Spartan is. I'm like, I know what it is. Just let me run around and shoot things. <laughs> and the guns are all weird. It's a know. great franchise, man. I, I think I've owned every Halo game. Yep, I have. Halo, uh, Combat Evolved. I owned the one for the computer for a while. Then Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo Reach, Halo 4. And I have Halo Wars, which I actually played wow. last night for the first time in a long time. And it's like a, what strategy. do you call those games? Like Command & Conquer, uh, yeah. Overhead, real-time yeah, yeah, strategy? Yeah, like, yeah, it's just a strategy game. Um, yeah, like... Well, the, the bundle came with that, and it came with, like, Forza Motorsport 4, which I was probably just, <laughs> just going to sell, but some people were like, it's good. And I know Tara likes racing games. Yeah, you couldn't sell it for much anyway. You might as well keep it. It's fun, well, it's actually. it's a new copy of a new game. I could probably get... Uh, well, oh, it's the newer mo most, Forza? Most of the, most of the stuff that I want is, like, used or old. Absolutely, so yeah. Exchange. See, and for me, like, I don't... I, there was only two games I own that are new. You know, it's Halo 4. And you have and, Batman, And, and, and Black Ops 2. Oh, Black... You have Black Ops 2? Yeah. Awesome. Um, That's a good campaign too. I don't know if you've played could, through that. Well, I don't play. Th I haven't touched the campaign yet. But um, I I played the multiplayer on Xbox. And I got Xbox Live because it, it's cheap. And um, why aren't we friends? Why aren't we friends on we, Xbox? We can Live? be friends soon. I I'm not that high of a level. I'm only like forty six. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know the rankings and stuff. I just play. And you want to talk about to Tara? <laughs> worried that you're not paying attention to her. I'm in this uh, clan, if you will, of 
it's we're called the Old Timers Clan, and that's a shameless plug. But the Old Timers Clan dot com is what we're called, okay. and it's a it's a gaming group for guys that are thirty and older. And I got in because I, I just messaged them. I was like, "Look, I'm tired of playing with twelve year olds. Can yeah, I please I join?" Adults, yeah. And and they were like, "Yeah, absolutely." And their thing is, don't rage, so don't throw a hissy yeah. fit if you yeah, lose. Exactly. And like, they don't mind cussing or because everybody gets a little heated. And you're like, you know, yeah. oh, the bastard. You know, they don't care about that. But you know, you don't say things, and they're yeah, very they're you. very respectful to everybody. You don't troll people. Absolutely, and you don't quit. Oh, well, Even if great. you're losing, it's great. And it's like, you don't say things like, oh, yeah, you're adopted. Because, you yeah. know, these guys are fathers and husbands, and they're yeah. like, look, I, have, they I adopted to, a they kid. Know, they know how to respect people. <laughs> yeah, you don't say I love things my like adopted that. adopted child. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and so it's great. It's great to play with these guys. Pause. But, what is Team Gunther on that? <laughs> it's Gunther Kia. It's the it's the Kia store, so they're called Team Gunther Kia. That's what I've always heard them called as. Well, that's another accidental plug. Yeah, Mozart. Gunther the high Kia. notes. Great music. Pass it on. What the anyway. what? But, uh,. <laughs> These guys are all in their 30s. Some of them are like in their 50s. And you said Tara's worried. And you know, these guys, all I ever, because we get on a chat every day because they all go to work and they're all IT guys because they're all nerds. Well, okay, I don't, I don't want to paint, let, let's be clear, I'm not going to paint my bride as somebody, I don't want to paint a picture of her like she's this evil shrew. You know, <laughs> no video games. Because what she did is she, she for a present, she gave me an, an Xbox controller as a gesture. And right. she said, I'm, I'm getting you this because I want to show that I support you doing doing what you just what you want to do I, right i'm trying to show you that i'm not trying to keep you from doing things that interest you so people need to know that about her too yeah absolutely so, you know so like um and honestly like i don't blame her for for having that kind of a worry but she chose to trust me instead and that's what good people do and so but, i no, but my thing is these guys are always all they ever say is yeah, can't play tonight. Wife's gonna be home, and they all take time right. to take care of their kids. They take yeah, care, of, you know. They exactly. only play on like the weekends. Sometimes, if their wife's out That's with her the friends, thing. you know what the, I mean. The, 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 people, and I picture you as that kind of pe gamer. Pe yeah, people who who play who play video games are, are, get lumped into a group with people who spend way too much. Speaking. Right. It's like anything, anything in moderation. You know, there are people. There's nothing really wrong, wrong with drinking. Now, there's something wrong with drinking too much. Yeah. Or you know, drinking on the job. You know, <laughs> or you know, and you can't so, do that. Um, you know, yeah, there's, and there's, 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 if you spend way too much time on it now, if you're like in college and you're done with your work, you know, whatever, you're done with your school, if that's what you want to do with your free time and you know, everyone want your free time. Absolutely. But you know, once you're in a committed relationship and you know, I'm about to get married. So like, that is your free time yeah, to work on your my, relationship my and build a relationship. Is making sure that I'm maintaining my relationship Absolutely. with my bride. So my, my, my attention is on, is for her. If I have time to myself, or leisure time, or if she's doing something, then I can shoot. Then I bought the Xbox. Really, is just another option of something to do. In my, yeah, in so you don't bore yourself watching. In my keyword stuff. spare time, which you probably don't have a lot of. You work full time. Lot, I don't have a lot of it. But your relationship full time. I come home and I'm like, you know what? I feel like playing a video game, and then I have the choice: do I want to play on Xbox Live, or do I want to keep playing uh, Arkham Asylum and advance, you know, the story? Mm -hmm. You know. The good thing about live is you can be, you play a pretty much 10 or 15 minutes at a time you can stop. That's what I've noticed is the more I play on live, the less I want to play my Xbox. Not because I don't yeah. enjoy it, but it's like, no, all right, like, that was good for 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. Like, like, I exactly. That's, that's what I noticed too. Like a few rounds and I'm just like, and I noticed it doesn't get to me being shot. Like, and I thought another um, a rule I made for myself, my Xbox was don't put this above other things. And um, don't let don't get angry if you're not if you don't do well because that's it's immature to a degree. It's I understand being competitive, and being frustrated, but if you're gonna let a virtual game affect your mood, then you're 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 way too involved in it. I um and I, I obviously I play video games way more than you do, but I at the same time I know when enough's enough. Yeah. But I play MMORPGs like I don't play WoW, but it's very similar. You know I play yeah. Guild Wars and stuff. But I play the and I find myself lately. As I went through college, like my first two years of college, I was 18, 19, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when I was really big into gaming because all the guys on my floor gamed together and we all had a great time. And then when I became like 20, 21, it became like going out, let's go drink, let's hang out, let's yeah. eat. And now it's more of a like a, I yes. really, I'll turn it on. Like yesterday I had it on for like three hours, didn't even look at the screen. I was like, I'll watch The Office. And I just left it on, like, because I had my monitors next to each other. I was like, I really don't want to play this right now. And yeah. it's like, I get this weird. It's hard to explain. Like I used to be so involved yeah, like that's in it, and now thing, I'm just now like eh. you'd rather do something that's a little more real, way more productive. Yeah. Well, I mean, not watching The Office isn't productive, but I do other things. I write a lot of music. I do you know things like that. Uh, if I could find a damn job, I'd be going to that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's one of those things. Like I don't mind putting the sticks down to go out and hang out with my friends. I have friends that won't put the sticks down. They're like, oh, I'm gonna stay in tonight. I'm sick, and it's like. 
know you're playing Call of Duty. Yeah. But you don't call them out on it, but you know that's what they're doing. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's it's almost like, it's like, I don't know if their brains work. It's like, after two months of owning this game, I'm going to get bored of it. So yeah. I play as much as I can within two months. It, it's almost like, to me, it's just as fun having not played for two weeks and picking it up. If anything, it's more fun because you remember, it's oh, fun yeah, to play yeah, the game. Yeah. It does not get less fun the less you play it. It just, you can't think of it like that. Like, it's, you know... It's amazing so, what games are doing well, though to and, get you and, and, and back because, in. And because, well, let me give you my, uh, I'm, I'll try to make this not a long story, but my whole history of gaming is, of course, I played, we had like the Super Nintendo or whatever when we were kids, like the big pad with the, you know, 8-bit motorcycle racing where you have yeah. like, a side view, like you're playing Mario, but on a motorcycle. Um, a side bike. And so um, there was that, and then we got the 64, which just was amazing. And I still have it. I, yeah, I play my 64. We still, play, regularly. we still play Mario Party regularly enough because Mario Party just, Two, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it's the best one. Yeah, because that, that's just a fun game. It looks awful on my television. Yeah, it doesn't matter how <laughs> old you are either. It's just that's just what it is, man. But we used to do that at the beach whenever it rained. We'd just come inside and be like, all right, well let's let's play Mario Party. And we had like a so, a super small television in my in my bedroom um, at the at the beach. But we'd all go up there and just play and then play against a computer character. We'd always make a Peach. We'd always put her on hearts. We'd be like, ah, Peach, why? <laughs> And then after a long time, we had the 64 for a long time, and there are other. And then at the time, I there are other kids who had like the Dreamcast and stuff. And that like, thing um, sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, and I just felt like I can't get into this, and so I pretty much for a while it was just the 64. Like things didn't evolve, evolve. And then um, PlayStation Two, Sony. Did, oh, there's the PlayStation, but we didn't get one of those. Oh, you didn't get one? No, because they're expe- we were just. My, I don't know if my parents were like we're, we're just not going to pay for one. We never really. None of us re- ever really expressed a longing for video games. We right. liked playing them, but they were simple and they weren't like they weren't encompassing our lives right. and stuff. And my parents, this is the key again: be responsible for your life, be responsible for your kids. Just parent them. You know, that's like people saying like Grand Theft Auto is to blame for like shootings. It's nope. not. Sane people can tell the difference between reality and and. And, and fiction and, and, and video games and virtual reality, you know, and good parents can you know, good parents enforce, you know, enforce rules on their children. Like you can play for 30 minutes a day, but you need to get your homework done before you play at 30 minutes. My parents limited my exposure and my playing time to time limits. And that kept me from being an unmotivated slob. Now, some kids are super motivated, play a lot of video games. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, you know, if you think video games are the problem, it's not. Parenting is the problem. Right. You know, anything in moderation. I mean, you've already really, said it. anything yeah. in moderation is an okay right, thing. Right. Exactly. So, mine was uh, always get good grades. You can do whatever you want. You right, know, keep, right. keep if, track if of it. Don't. School, I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just yeah. Um, you know, risk reward. You know, work reward. Set up a reward system. My reward for getting my homework done was you can play video games, but you can't play all day. You right. Because right. That's still not healthy. I get do it. Something. Go outside. Go play with a friend. Go to a friend's house. When know? I think, you know, that I, I'd love to see the statistics for people that, uh, I, which I don't think you could even relate this, but people that are engrossed in video games are they single, single childs? Like you have two brothers. You know, uh-huh. I've, I'm an only child. Right. So my thing is, I could go play with kids in my neighborhood if I lived in a neighborhood that had kids, but I uh-huh. didn't. You know, and who's going to drive their kid over 10 minutes my, or, you know, whatever. And right. so what am I going to do? I could play with my Legos, which I did all the time. Yeah. And then, you know, you can play video games. And then, then they made a Lego video game. And then they made Minecraft. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah. But, I, so we had the, play, we had, um, so we had uh, N64 and then the PlayStation 2 came out. And we were older at that point. And we were like, a couple of consoles have been created s- since this last console we've had. It's been a long time, and I think I don't know if it was Peter's. I think it was Peter's idea. My brother Peter said, "I think it was his idea to say, do you guys all want to go in on a PlayStation Two? We can split the cost." You know? Right. And so <clears throat> Peter and Philip, you know, even Philip still to this day is probably the best of all of us at saving his money. Maybe Peter, you know, just from having a job. But Philip always knew, even as a young child, not, not to just spend his money. I spent all my money. You know? I always did too, man. Um, I think I so still do. When they bought it. Peter and Philip paid for the uh, PlayStation 2, and their whole thing was I could play for 15 minutes free a day, but I had to I had to pay them at a certain rate to pay. I, had to, I think <laughs> a bunch I, of well, bastards. Well, no, what else? That, that makes it's sense. fair. It's it fair because they paid for it, but that's funny. They paid for it, and right now they they had to pay. They each had to pay half of it, and so I, I owed them 
I think I owed them each like 40 bucks or something. And so I got, I, I could, and all, the only games we had were NBA Street and SSX. Oh, that was fun, SSX, um, man. And so I'd play, I could, you could play two or three games of NBA Street in 15 minutes if you wanted to. And so at that point, it's just like, okay, I'm done. That's you what know? you got your and, life down and, to. And if I wanted to play the PlayStation, pay up. Yeah. Even my brothers understood, like, that's funny. You know, that's the way to do that. You haven't paid for this, so we'll, we're not gonna we're not gonna tell you can't play it at all, but you can't just sit here and never pay us. <laughs> and that's fine because that's how things should go. So, um, and we had that for a long. I mean, we still have that one still at the house too. And then at that same time, the GameCube came out. Nintendo, you know, decided we need a new console. Right. And they were making they made a lot of you know Game Boys and stuff. I think that's Nintendo, right? Yeah. Okay. So they were doing that, but they're like, okay, we need a new console. So they created the GameCube. And I had a friend who got that, and he had a PlayStation 2, and then there were kids. And then, I don't know if around that same time was um, Xbox came out, the first Xbox from Microsoft in, like, 2005 or something, 2004. Right. It was around that same time. Um, so we got that. So gaming was never a huge problem. I mean, I would go over to, like, um, a, like a couple, you know, Yeah, friends, friends always have them and stuff like that. A, but you're playing a game with a friend. And that's still an interactive thing. Yeah. Like, you know, hey, we could go outside. And we still did. Me and my friend Sydney, we'd always go outside and make movies. But if we didn't feel like it, say, so you just want to play, do you want to play, you know, Grand Theft Auto? Do you want to play this? And I always played games at Sydney's house. My parents wouldn't let me buy or own. So right. We always played Grand Theft Auto, and I'd go and, like, you know, shoot, you know. That's how all my friends were. They all wanted to play my Grand Theft Auto. Right, because they're because our parents wouldn't let us, you know. But even then, like, and so if that... That's a whole other conversation, like, you know, doing things you're not allowed to do at home. <laughs> at a certain point, you know, like, there's things you need to be exposed to, you know, to under... Because telling kids they can't do something, at some point, they're going to be curious, why am I not allowed to right. do this? And they're going to do it, and if you don't really teach them... If you don't really explain to them why, then they're just going to do it too much, possibly. I mean... There's a, show, I had, there's a show on AMC called Breaking Amish. Where yeah, Amish, they yeah, come, I used to watch that. They come to New York, and then they do all this stuff they're not allowed to and do. Disgusting too. And then, like, so, you know. But the point is, I did that. And so, um, but that's, I wouldn't even say there was a period in my life that I played the most. I probably played the most video games in college. Because when I went to college, at that point, the 360 had come out. Right. Um, and, um, you know, the Wii had come out, and the PlayStation 3 had come out. In 2007, all those, those three things came out. Um, but I never owned them because I never had to. And so then I went to college and, um, my roommate, John had, um, had a place he brought a PlayStation two with him. Um, and then I can't remember if he also an Xbox or he got one the next summer or something, but I never had to get an Xbox and I never really played one too much. I thought the controller was weird and funky cause I was used to the PS2. Right. Um, and so we would play, but then like really sophomore years, like I, and then just, you know, a few times at, like, someone's house. I'd only played Halo a couple of times. But we played it so much, you know, in our free time. So we had free time. And then that's where I really, my friends and I really became, like, a group and hung out together. Through video games, And we yeah. always, well, not always through video games, but just we all knew each other. And that's how we sort of how we bond, you know, a way to No, I mean, bonded. there's other things, but we, that's we, a good way we to. We hung out together and we played we played video games together. And that's really what kind of knit us together is a common, just a, one common interest got us to get to know each other and get to the, used to each other's humor. And that's, well, that's how it works. I have my buddy, my buddy Forte always says, if you want to, um... If a girl really wants to see, like, how a man's going to treat her, I know it sounds kind of silly, but if you were to go on a first date or something with a girl, uh -huh. like, say when you first met Tara, the first thing you guys did was go bowling. Yeah. And say you were a bad sport about it. Mm -hmm. That tells her, I don't know if I'm really going to like this guy. If he's a bad sport about losing to me in bowling, what's he going to be when it comes time to pay bills? Or he yeah. doesn't get paid. And so that's another way you, with your friends. Like, say you were playing basketball, a pickup game, right. or you are playing Xbox. When you find that one friend that's like, you know, bump this, I don't want to play anymore, I'm so sick of this, yeah. you guys suck, you, you and you're like, oh no, man, it's just yeah. a video, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's 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 a good judge of character in, in some. I mean, not saying just video games, but anything competitive. Yeah. Which for the most part, a lot of video games are competitive. But any you can you can get a feel for a room or get a feel for people in the room, you know, and realize I had I had a weird experience where this guy was just like screaming things at everybody in the room. Oh yeah. And it was just like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're just trying to have a good time. Yeah. And so. But that was fun, and that's how we sort of got knit together, and that's just what we would do at night. I mean, like, half the time at night, I mean, before you were 20, we did things before we were 21 that, we were, that people shouldn't do before they're 21, but, like, um, 
I say things, one thing in particular, but like, I mean, most of it just amounted to just, we, we hung out and we went and did things in Savannah. We went and did things in the city. You know, we weren't antisocial. Right, absolutely. We, we went out and everything, but we also just, I'm not the kind of person who has to go out and do a bunch of stuff to enjoy my time. I really just, for me, just not to have to be anywhere is enough to just enjoy. I could be sitting, I could be sitting on like a bench, you know, whittling a piece of wood. But if I want to be at work that day, I'm really just enjoying myself. Yeah, cause absolutely. Because I, I don't have to be anywhere. So it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. If I just, if I have nowhere I have to be, unless I'm just really bored, I'm content. Right. So, um, that was the best part of like, oh, I'm done for, well, I'm done with class for the day. I have some stuff I have to do later. I'm going to play some video games. And that taught you, as long as I time manage, this is okay right now. That's what you learn in college, is to time manage, if you haven't already learned it. What the uh, fuck, guy? Oh, Jesus Christ, lady. That was a lady. Yeah. Well, she was she all up in your lane. Oh, like, man. did she not see the trailer? She almost, I'm talking about that insurance. Yeah. Yeah, God, dude, I would have been so pissed. I would have been pissed. Be like, $8 insurance that we don't need, and then that know. bitch would have hit you. Oh, I uh, called her up, but that was very, uh, no, she's a misogynist, bitch. She almost, no, <laughs> whatever, well, no, but. Well, okay, she's not, she, she's in We don't know if she's not a nice person. She might she, have a great attitude and made a mistake, but she's in, she's in Like, who was driver. not paying attention to that? I think she was trying to get out of the other people's lanes, but you have to understand, like, you're There's other people in this lane. You're somebody else. Grand Theft Auto for real. Anyway, my huh. dad, man, this car needs a better horn. My horn. Me, my, my, car. I, I don't want to make like a big horn noise because it's going to annoy everybody. But my car's horn is loud and intrusive. It tells people, "Hey, you're, this is not okay. What you're doing." Um, and you did a polite horn. That was nice of you. Yeah, that I wasn't was even like, like a, "Get that all the I way." I didn't lay on it. I was just like, "You well, didn't have time to lay well, on I it." I looked in the rearview mirror, and because she was still inching closer, and I was like, it, "I was watching to see if she hit the trailer," because she almost hit. She was not stopping, you know, and I knew, like, I'll pass her before she scratches the car, but I thought she might get the trailer. trailer, yeah, that would have ripped, that would have messed us up, probably more than the trailer, yeah, you know, but. So, like, and I would have had to pay you all a lot of money. <sighs> oh, that was, that was scary. I admit that was scary. I wasn't scared. I've been more scared than other Well, I was just accidents. more thinking of, like, you know, throwing a Wii remote through a television or, like, oh. <laughs> you know, well, breaking a trailer. So, so we're going, so we played Xbox a lot. So I got used to Xbox's controls, and I realized, like, most of these games are better. Like, I have more fun playing these, these games than I do on the PlayStation 2 ones. Not, just, not because this is a newer console, but just because games in general have gotten better and more Absolutely. interactive and more intuitive and so they're more in tune with how people want to interact with with the virtual world and um and graphics are a lot better than they were in 2000 so it's so i could still go home and like the you know during the summer during the breaks and play playstation 2 and be content right you know um and then there was the Wii games, and those were fun enough but most of them were like weird little kitty Wii resort and stuff and those are fun but like Sometimes you just want to shoot aliens or, right. you know, shoot terrorists. Um, and so when I graduated, I was like, man, I'm not going to have an Xbox anymore. And I bought a couple of games at that point, you know, just a couple of used or old, like, you know. Right, so you could have your own, like a, yeah. Like a $15 copy of Assassin's Creed and then, like, Halo 3, You remember playing PST. that at my dorm? Yeah, and that was so fun. Yeah, it was a fun game. I, was, I was remember thinking, like, wow, this is great. And all we did was, like, all right, next time you die, I get to go. And yeah. That's all we did, and we just yeah. ran around killing people. Yeah. <laughs> we, sounds we, awful, well, but. Well, was no, it, there was no tact. <laughs> you know, I just ran around, and then I waited for the guards to antagonize. Like, I would go up and, like, push the guards, and then when they start to fight me, I, all they do is counterattack. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's what was fun to me. So, playing that was, was, was great, and, but then I, I graduated, and I was like, well, now I, what do I have? I have a PlayStation 2 that's really only a third mine. And so I took the 64 and just, I thought about it and I was like, do I want to get an Xbox? You know, do I want to wait and see if there's going to be a console? But then I didn't, I was just listening. I went like a year without it and I just waited on Microsoft. Like, you know, if they announce a new one, I'll just get the new one. And Which then, they have, but yeah. it won't be out for a while. And yeah. It's going to be expensive as balls. Right. And so I was just, at that point I thought, well, let me just get a 360. Cause I, and I was, I was picking, I asked Tara, like, I think I want to get a console. Um, you know, and I know that Tara, there was part of her, like, she came over one time with some PlayStation 2 games from home, and she, um, and we played, and so we know that we like playing certain things together. Right. But, um, you know, so, um, so I asked her, I asked for her input, like, well, I'll get whatever console, if you don't agree to a certain console, I won't get it, you know, but I don't, I don't want this to just be a, oh, crap, I'm in the wrong way. Um, I don't want this to just be a decision that I make, I want you to be okay with it. So that's the first. That's the first step, everybody. If you have a spouse, you know, include her in the decision making. 
So I asked her, do you want to get a Wii because that might be more interactive and it might be more fun for right. us? I said, but and we don't need a PlayStation. We pretty much rule out PlayStation 3 right off the bat. Absolutely. Because we said... Um, you have a Blu-ray mo- player. Most of the, yeah, we have the Blu-ray player, so that... So that um, so that capability is already not a, not an advantage because we have that. Um, um, we have you know and most of the games on PlayStation Three are also on Xbox except for uh, like Uncharted. Yeah, which, there's only a couple. It's games. really fun and I wish I could play it, but I, I you know. Uh, but Xbox and every console can stream like Netflix and stuff because we did it on the Wii and college and stuff. So that all had the same advantages. It just came down to the Xbox probably has the best games. So. Um, so I said, I'm going to get a 360. And, um, you know, because I thought Halo is fun, Call of Duty is fun. Those, you know, but Halo is exclusive to Xbox. Mm-hmm. Call of Duty is not. Um, Batman is not. Um, so I just picked Xbox. It had a slight edge over the PlayStation 2, which I wasn't going to get because it already had, because I already have a Blu-ray player. Right. So really, the Wii could have been a good option, but the Wii has none of the games I want. You can't play Call of, Call of Duty on the Wii. You can't Wii. play just about anything on a Wii. Yeah. I once sold my Xbox 360, got a Wii, and then sold my Wii and got an Xbox 360. Yeah. I once did that because I thought it was awesome, and then I played it for like a week, and I was like, this sucks. I don't, I don't like... And the Wii's fun, but just the Wii's more for families. It really is, and I was in college. But yeah, I so, will say, if you want... Have you, have you played PlayStation Move? No, it's not. It's it's the Wii equivalent for PlayStation, but it's PlayStation graphics. And it's like, if the Wii would just make an HD console, they'd be in the money. Yeah. But, dude, I played this game, and it was me and my buddies. We were playing on New Year's just for, like, ten minutes. Just He was like, you want to see it? I was like, yeah, I kind of want to see what it's I like. I let you use the WaveBird controller more, because I can't stand using those Wii modes, nunchucks, as controllers. Yeah, and this thing has a big ball on it, so you look silly. It looks like a magic wand. Yeah. But this archery game, you, you pull back, and you... Uh, you shoot, but the graphics are just beautiful. They're, I mean, and it's just one of those like I was like I was blown away with how. And then you play like ping pong, and you can play bocce ball. <laughs> wow. And and they had uh, what else? Volleyball, which I didn't get. Uh, I didn't get a chance to play. And um, what else? I think that was it. Bowling, which you know every interactive game has bowling, but it was it was cool. And I was like, well, if if the PlayStation has this, there's no point getting a Wii. Not that I would buy a PlayStation, but there are some things on the PlayStation I would like to have. But I can't shell out 300 bucks for a PlayStation. I just can't. I don't see the benefit, especially with a new Xbox coming out in June. I'm just like, whatever. And I'm not going to get it in June. Obviously, I'm going to wait till like, December or something. But And I knew that if I got an Xbox, the, there were plenty of... The, the biggest factor for me, really, was knowing, like, one, I know my mind, and I know that I don't need every new game, so I know I'm not going to... I know that the biggest price I'll pay on the Xbox is, the, is buying the console. Right. And after that, I said, most of the games I want to play are old by now, and they're reduced price. Right. And so I thought, the only, like I said, I only bought two new ones, just so I could have something that everyone else was playing, you know, because I wanted to get Xbox Live, and that was cheap. And, um... So I, knew, I wanted to have Halo 4 in case I didn't have friends who had it, and I wanted to have Black Ops 2 in case I had friends who had it. Um, and so everything else I got, I bought, you know, um, I have a bunch of stuff in my wish list on Amazon, but I thought I'm just really going to buy one game at a time, really. I, yeah. I bought, like, a few so I could have a choice, but those are plenty to play for now. Like, I, I could, there's still the campaign on Halo 4, there's still the one on Black Ops 2, I'm playing Arkham Asylum right now before I play Arkham City, So, but they're still cheaper than they were when they were, than when they were new. Um, and I have Grand Theft Auto 4 in case I just want to blow off Steam. All right. But I've hardly ever played that. I played that online with Kellen, you know, because you can be in the same server and shoot rocket launchers at each other. Oh, yeah. Um, where you can go to that swing set that glitches and launches you. I mostly just play, like, Call of Duty and Batman, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's fine for me. And realizing, like, I can get a lot of... And me, I can get a lot of mileage out of one game. And so I knew that the rate at which I'm going to purchase games is going to be ultimately insignificant in my finances. You know? Right. So, and I thought... And me, and, and it also makes me buy less movies to entertain me. And it just makes me, you know... It makes me really just focus on what I have. You get way more mileage out of what you pay for a game than what you pay for a movie. Absolutely. I mean, so, yeah. I still like movies, you know, whatever. But, um... If I'm really, if I'm watching like a, if I'm watching like a show or a movie at this point, I'm trying to do it through Netflix because one, I've probably never seen it before, and two, I'm already paying for Netflix as a service. Right. So I bought the Xbox knowing I need to put this a certain amount to justify this purchase, but I need to not make it control my life or my or my wallet, and that's all Tara asked of me, and that's what I that's what I promised, and that's what I agreed to, because it's not it's not a hard promise to make because it's reasonable. Yeah, absolutely reasonable. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's completely. What I will say, uh, 
I was thinking the other day, and I talked to these guys on this forum, you know, my clan, uh, quite a bit, and they all have wives, not all of them, but for the most part, they have, you know, fiance wives, girlfriends, you know, and they're all trying to see what, what video games, because, like, you know, they want them to be a part of it, and, you know, a 30-year-old woman probably isn't going to be into video games, unless it's the right thing, like a Wii, they can see how cute it is, or whatever, yeah. but, you know, they, they've said, so far, they've said their wives are, like, addicted to Skyrim, because there's a way you can play Skyrim where you can play, like, a housewife. It's really silly, and it's not... It sounds a little chauvinistic. It's not... You can play it, and so if the yeah. ladies don't want to go around slaying dragons, they can build a house. Right. But once you build a house and adopt children and get married, that, that's about it. But you, you beat the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you don't... There's no beating it, there's, you know... But that's one of those games you can pack hundreds of hours into, just over time, over years, and, you right. know... But they have that... The, the ladies seem to like that. They seem to like, um... What is it else they like? Uh, uh, uh... There's a couple that'll play Halo, but it's hard well, to get a girl onto a shooter using two sticks. I've, I've, I've achieved that. Tara, I tried to get Tara to play Call of Duty with me, because she would, because one day, I, and I, I think part of it, I, I don't know if it was her genuine interest, or her just trying to extend to me, right. like, a, a gesture. And so, she said, well, let's, let's play, let's play something. I said, okay, well, let's, let's, let's try Call of Duty. And that's not for her head, because Tara, some people have a hard, Call of Duty's tough, because enemies don't stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. They don't inhale either, but they're way harder to see. You die way faster in Call you of Duty. You played the bots? I'm assuming you played the bots, right? I Are didn't you, know how in, in Call of Duty. You just Duty. threw her online? <laughs> no, no, no. I just played her against me, and I said, okay, like... Oh, that's fair. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't go I didn't, <laughs> I I didn't go anywhere. And Obviously, like, I can tell... I don't know the maps very well, but she doesn't know them at all. Yeah. You know, and she doesn't understand the concept. And so she she likes to play inverted. I found that out about her. Weird. Because because that's just what she's used to with like anything that's first person. And I said, huh. okay, that that that's fine because lot that's not uncommon, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so I just had to teach her like all the button controls and pretty much what to do if you're being shot at. Like you should probably crouch. You need to go and scope to shoot more accurately. But if they're this close and you have this gun, there's a lot of factors. But for her, it was just way too not complicated. But Call of Duty is a complex control system. Right, right. And there are a lot of games that are a little, so I think, too we complex. We played Halo, which is almost the same control system, pretty much the same ideology. Um, but she can see but, better. But she just responded to it a lot better. Yeah. Um, so we played the firefight in Halo. Oh, that's, that's fun. How, that's there you go. That's how, how you get her into it. Exactly. Started. Exactly. Like, we did a couple trial rounds just like, here, here's what I look like. You know, I'm shooting at you. What are you going to do? You know, just some real quick training that I said maybe it'd be better and for her it's better to have more enemies to practice on right so that's why I think she played, might like the so bots we played the firefight so Tara now has a goal where she wants to beat me in Halo so that's something that like now, now, now I found a way to interact with my bride you know with this system which is a, a benefit that I didn't foresee you right know? I, and so I'm glad that if, if she was not interested and she's just doing it for my benefit then she's a great person for that because because that's showing you know her willing to, to come over on my turn right. and, and try and do something with me. You know, and if she does enjoy it, then I'm glad because I'm, I'm glad we have that. So, you know, Tara's not interested in Grand Theft Auto. She's not interested in, you know, I, I said, she, she said one day she might try playing Batman. So we'll see if she if she likes that or not. Um, you have Arkham Asylum? Not Arkham, Arkham City. Asylum, yeah. I'm Arkham Arkham City. City. I, I just Arkham didn't City. like Arkham City. Oh, I hear it's amazing. But I couldn't get into it just because I don't think I'm that big of a bat. I, I still haven't seen the Dark Knight Rises. That's the thing. I'm a big Batman yeah, fan. Yeah, so I still I'm, haven't seen it. I'm not even. I'm not. No one in the world is, is as big of a Batman fan as Dustin is. But um, but I really enjoy playing the games. Is like playing one big long graphic novel. It's, yeah, it's and perfect, I can see that. It's the perfect marriage of like the art and picture quality of um, of of the uh, of the graphic novels. But you have the voice from the Batman animated series. So you have Kevin Conroy as Batman. You have Mark Hamill. You know, Luke Skywalker is the Joker. Oh, that's right. You know, and so no one does a better Joker than him. And so you have this great voice cast with these well-rendered characters and a great story. And so it's pretty much like like reading a Batman graphic novel. You know, all the villains are there. Right. The story is good. The Joker is usually behind the, the overarching story. But um, but there's all the villains he has at his disposal. His disposal, <laughs> disposable. And um, I think you'd like Arkham City. I just I want sure to like it. it. I just don't want to play. Soren it because, loved it because it, I already know too much about how Arkham Asylum ends. But I don't know everything, so I want to play through the game, still having that right, right, surprise, right, and then play Arkham City. And plus, it just gives me time to enjoy the games I own. You know, as long as it stays within moderation, that I can justify purchasing the Xbox. Um, because it's the thing, like video games aren't really just for. I mean. The, the, once, since video games were, they used to be just for kids, because really only teens and kids were playing them when right. they started, but those people have grown up, 
you know, but a lot of just the boom and popularity of them lately, um, it's just because that's a growing technology, that's a growing business, and those are really improving at a rapid rate, you know, user-friendly consoles and games. It's always going to be interesting to people, and I think as long as people keep their priorities straight, then it shouldn't be an issue for anyone. Right. Um, now, if people are neglecting their children to play Xbox, then there's something wrong with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. But that goes back to parenting, you know, and personal responsibility, you know. Do what you have to do, and you do what you want to do in your free time. It's just like doing your homework. Yeah, it's just like it's just like doing your homework. Take care of the the, the, the necessary things first. If you have time, do all do that. And that's what I do. I don't skip work to play Xbox. No, you know? I don't think I've ever. Well, I can't say I haven't skipped a class play because I'm pretty sure I did that at Auburn once or twice. I don't even remember. I've skipped, I've, I've, oh, I skipped classes in college, but I was. I, didn't I think see. it was when Rock Band Three came out. Not Rock Band Three. It's our Hero Three came out. But I never, I never thought, wow, I'd rather just like I'm having such a good time playing Xbox. I want to stop. I'm not going to class, even though I have a test. I was like, oh you know, yeah, absolutely if I skipped not. class, nothing was going on that day already, and I already wasn't planning on going. Right, absolutely. You know, outside. and it was. I, I'll be honest. When I transferred to South. I think I missed, I don't know, two classes, three classes in the three years I was at South because I, it was something I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to attend, you know, yeah. when you're taking core classes like English and history, like how often do you really just want to sit there and listen to this bozo talk for an hour? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I could just read the book, bro. Like yeah. you don't have to, and I get it. Some people need that interaction, but I think I missed, I missed one class and it was on accident. I didn't mean to miss it. It was like four o'clock on a Friday, every other Friday. Mm -hmm. And I just forgot about it. And we had a test that day. And I got a B in it. I was so pissed because I had almost straight A's at South. I think I got like two B's, to one and one in music history and one in that stupid class. Yeah, I had good grades in college, so like you know, it's just. And I played plenty of video games all throughout. Yeah, yeah, I mean. So that's where I am with it. That's my whole journey. Gaming was never a huge part of my life, and that's why it was a shock to Tara at first because she just. And part of it was just us being long distance. She just hadn't encountered me having much of an interest in it, so oh, she didn't right. really understand where it was coming from. You know, and I was just like, I, I like having interactive media. I'm not going to go nuts, though. Right. So, like, I don't... People And people were... When I got the Xbox, I was like, you should play Mass Effect. You should play Skyrim. You should play all this. And I'm like, those all cost so much money. They do and, not... Yeah, and they I, won't. And I do and not have an initial interest in them. I, I've, I always wanted to play Call of Duty and Halo even before I owned an Xbox. Right. So, I'm playing the things I already had an interest in before I got my console. And those, that's kind of the structure I stick to. And that keeps costs down. Yeah, you know most of the stuff I want to play is like Left 4 Dead and Assassin's Creed. Yeah, and see, so maybe you, now. you might not even like uh, if those. I mean, it seems to me like you like third person and first person shooters. So like yeah. Gears of War and those kind of games, Call of Duty, those kinds of games. Uh, and and that's why Skyrim would be. It's not a shooter. It's a. It's very much an RPG. It's like, do you want to be a wizard? Do you want to be a you know? Yeah. And you kind of have I'm to be into, into it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Fallout Three is uh, the greatest game I think I've ever played in the world, besides any Zelda game ever, because I'm never gonna say that Zelda's worse than anything, because I love Zelda. But Fallout Three is one of those. It's like eight bucks. Yeah. For the game and all the expansions, it's like seven ninety seven at yeah. GameStop. And like, whenever you get the time, pick that up, and you can play through that. And then leave, forget about it for like nine months and come back later and you'll be like, oh yeah, this is cool. You know what I mean? And it's first person or third person and it's RPG. So it gives you, it kind of gets you into that world so you can branch out a little bit. And in games like Red Dead Redemption are in the middle because it's... Oh, you like, yeah, you like the open world fun. games? I like, I like open worlds. Well, well, to a degree. Now, a lot of Red Dead Redemption is just, you have to ride a horse to a like, Well, a yeah. A lot of in between. And I don't like games that take you... It's not that I'm impatient, but you're playing a video game to be entertained and to right. do stuff. And if, if if you're playing a video game where I'm walk, where I have to get from one town to another through a desert, should not feel like I'm actually walking through a desert. <laughs> it shouldn't feel as boring as that is. It should be entertaining. You know, I should encounter a pack of wolves that try to kill me. Right. It should be exciting. You know, visually, I think it's that's so, one of the like best games. It's sort of like when you're walking through the woods and that bear shows up. Like the first time that happened in Red Dead Redemption, I, I, I just got so much pleasure out of watching. Um, I was watching John play that because um, he'd go into the woods and I hear that there's like a bear in these woods and then like boom a bear tackles him and the screen gets all red yeah. and he just goes ah <laughs> and, and, um, and you have to shoot this bear and he's like I'm going to try and knife it to death and so, that's like, hard you get an achievement for so, that so, so once so and that's what we heard he said like I think you get an achievement for that because he says I'm at the point where I can shoot it I can, I can, I can survive an, an, an attack by this bear right um, but uh, I said, I, I'm going to try and knife it to death. And so he just would stand there with a knife and it would charge him and he'd like sidestep it and like knife just, it like, like 15 times. Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 just stab it, like stab the hell out of it. And then finally he did it and he just, 
he got the achievement. And it was so much fun to watch. I never got that achievement cause I because I never tried failed, it, I guess. Because he fails like four times in a row before he does it, and it's always fun. And that's half the time. It's just fun watching others And play. that's one of the few games that you can really watch people play. You know, it's got... But I... It's, seriously, that's like the prettiest game I think I've seen in a long time. Just yeah. this horses and, and the desert and blah, blah, blah. And my favorite thing to do in that game was... Um, get the lasso and go lasso criminals because <laughs> you got more money for lassoing them instead of killing them and that was my favorite thing was dragging them behind a horse and then there's one where you have to like save a train from being robbed or rob a train I don't remember no I was a good guy so save a train from being robbed and that was cool man it was like oh this is I was, Wild Wild I was, West I was a bad man <laughs> you had to wear the bandana on your face I shot dogs and stuff oh like, man was, <laughs> you're awful I did oh, I did horrible things. I, I always feel so bad when I do stuff like that in those games well and and they even have like John Marsden like say like give you like verbal cute clues that you're doing immoral things <laughs> yeah. like, like I'd shoot the dog and then I would skin it and then while I'm skinny, he's going, God help me! Or something. Or, what have I done? And I'm going, like, No, John Marsden, you're doing this. <laughs> that's so like, mean. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, the only but game I can thing. be bad at is Grand Theft Auto. The different, okay, and you can listen to what I just said and say, That's awful. <laughs> but you know what? Am I out in the world actually killing dogs no. and skinning them? No, because, I, because I'm mentally stable. And it's kind of funny. You get a kick out of it because you're like, Oh my God, I just. That yeah. little kid's like, Look at my dog. And then you shoot it yeah, in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, where in the real world would I ever do that? Like, ever. Yeah, like, I don't care about this kid because he's not real, and neither yeah. is this dog, and neither is this bullet. This entire, I'm looking at a, in a, in a, in a, in a screen. You know, like, I'm not, I'm not committing any real atrocities. So, like, you know. The best game I've played like that so far, that's been that entertaining. Grand Theft Auto 4 is an amazing game. It's, it's, it's. Uh, all the Grand, the Grand Theft Auto franchise has really made an impact on the world of gaming. But yeah. the best one I've played so far is Saints Row the Third, which I don't know if you've seen any of it, but it's the most, it's the most fucking absurd game I've ever seen in my life. It's like you want a helicopter, boom, biggest helicopter in the world. Like you want a, a jet that can hover, you got it, and that is the best thing in the game. And you can uh, you can use like a UAV. You know what a UAV is in, yeah. in Call of Duty. Yeah. And you can call in like Hellstorm missiles. Like oh. it's just average Joe walking around with Hellstorm missiles. And then there's like a remote control car, but it's a remote, and you shoot a car. Like if that car in front of us is driving, we would shoot it. I mean, you control it, and the guy in the car is going, <laughs> "What's happening?" And then you crash it into something else, and it blows up, and the cops come after him. Oh, it's just it's it's absolutely absurd. There's a pimp in the game that only talks in auto tune. <laughs> and that's it. That's all he does. I close out by saying I think video games appeal to men so much because there's not just oh because it's a video game and you're guys and that's what you like. There's there's this what's inherent in the heart of a man is having a quest like a goal, something to fight for, and something to test his worth. Something to te like do I have what it takes? And we used to have plenty of tests of that back when there was like clans that would like hunt. I mean, that's why that's why a lot of fathers, fathers and sons hunt together, right? Because because that's a father, you know, imparting wisdom on his son. It's a, it's a chance for his son, his son to show his skill and show his worth and prove himself to his father. Because that's really what all men seek to a degree. You can disagree if you like, but I think most of us would agree that you know you want to prove that you have what it takes. You know, but we're in an age now where we don't, you know, I mean, there are battles, they're like soldiers, and that's maybe why they are inspired to go to war is because they want to defend their country and they want to know they have what it takes, you know, or, or they already right. do know they have what it takes and they're confident in their abilities. Um, but, but it's not like it used to be where we don't have to hunt for our food anymore, you know, we haven't had to for a long time. So that's not so much part of our initiation anymore. There's not really that much initiation for man. That's really on a parent-to-parent -parent basis. So maybe having a, a virtual quest, you know, for something to, to fight for, or just I like fighting games because I like knowing. Like every time I, I get a I get a kill in Call of Duty or something, I'm like, and I'm and I'm still alive. I think, okay, I have skill now. Is that really a marketable skill that, that, that <laughs> you know, that, that's going to help me in the long run? Not really, but that's why I don't take it that seriously because it's just a leisure activity and I give it as much weight as it deserves as something I do in my free time, which is if I'm not doing that well, I don't care. It's not that big a deal. Like, unless I'm a professional Call of Duty player, it's not a marketable skill that I need to work on. <laughs> that's really funny though. I just picture somebody going into an interview and be like, yeah, I'm really, really good at Call of Duty. Duty. <laughs> 
Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're a surgeon. What do you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why do you need that skill? Yeah, well, so you like, know, I'm good with my hands. Yeah. So, like, maybe that's why it appeals to men is because they do get a sense of satisfaction in completing a quest where they're like, yes, you know, they feel. Adequate. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I'm you, always happy. It makes you feel adequate, and just the, the trade-off is find other things in your life that make you feel adequate to actually measure your worth by because right. no one is going to care in a life or death situation that was kind of scary yeah they're acting like I, the listeners are going to think that there's a train like <laughs> about to hit us and it's just parallel the interstate and they're I don't know what, I don't know if there's someone on the, like a damsel in distress tied up on the tracks it's going to save her because if she did she got cut in half because that yeah video games are okay but in moderation is really where they belong and people don't need to measure their worth the only thing that video games have really helped me, like instilled in me, is like I'm detail oriented, so I know like when I'm looking for something to check every room. Right. Because in video games, they hide things in rooms you don't expect to find them in. Especially in Mark Arkham Asylum, they encourage you to just check every pathway and find clues and use your mind. Arkham, Asy- Arkham Asylum is good because they teach you to like notice things and be observant. It doesn't. Good video games teach you something as well. Yeah. You know, strategy games are good because they teach you how to prioritize. Video games teach you how to prioritize in a way too. Whether in the balance between playing them in real life or balancing goals within the game. Right. So, you know, that's just where it needs to stay. You know, I mean, what measures my worth as a, as a person is how is how well I perform at my job or the kind of husband I want to be. That's how I measure my worth as a man. You know, or whenever I go on like a difficult run or do anything difficult, that's how I measure my worth. I don't measure right. it by a game. Anyway, well, I think that'll do it. Yeah, that'll um, do, Pig. For, uh, for this, but uh, stay tuned for episode 39 now, I guess. Um, and um, we'll uh, reconvene another time. Thanks, Ian. Later.